Photo Walk is a Loading Zone production. I've found a properly squelchy place to walk this week on the Photo Walk. This is somewhere I tread often. And uh, it's amazing with the seasons how much it changes. Sometimes you can't even walk along here. It gets so overgrown with, uh, with stingers. And then the leaves drop and the rains arrive. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's more of a waterfall than, uh, than it is a walk. Poetry should begin with emotion in the poet and end with the same emotion in the reader. The poem is simply the instrument of transference. Who said that? Philip Larkin, the brilliant, often melancholic English poet and novelist. This, uh, this solitary man who absolutely loathed publicity was for 30 years a librarian. Anyway, I wanted to read you that because he features today in some way. And um, I thought that quote... Uh, well, I thought it was very true also when it comes to photographs. You could, you could swap out the word poetry and insert photography, couldn't you? Photography should begin with emotion in the photographer and end with the same emotion in the viewer. The, uh, the photograph is simply the instrument of transference. You see? More of that later on in the show. Um, over the last week, there's been a, a fresh sprinkle to use the first snowy Christmassy reference of the year, for this show anyway. There was the, a fresh sprinkle of ICM. In other words, a good deal of mail and pictures into the, the assignment show, the challenge set by our friend and actor and photographer, Bill Ward, where he asked us to go and make some ICM. So this week, this week, for my sketchbook pictures that I'll share on the show page, I'm going to try and shoot some ICM as I walk. So I'll, I'll walk with a theme today. Uh, my sketchbook pictures will be intentional camera movement, where you move the camera as you photograph, just a, just a little bit, or slightly zoom, although I'm, I'm using a prime lens, so I won't be zooming. And, uh, and you create these really quite artistic interpretations of what lies before before your eyes look I'll, I'll make one <laughs> i'll make one now let me put my if i can find a dry place let me put your letters down there i'm uh i'm using my x pro one fully manual camera again uh, this week with um with a samyang i've brought the samyang 12 millimeter lens out actually it's a really really misty day so these are the kind of days i <laughs> I suppose, I, usually I'd be saying, I'm going to make misty pictures today, but I've chosen ICM. So whether you'll even notice it's misty, I'm not even sure. And I've also got, it's so cold, we're down to two. One stroke, two degrees today, so I've brought out thick layers of, of, uh, of clothing. And I have a top pocket, so at last, like I used to during the winter, I can pop you in my pocket while I make this picture. Hold on. There we go. So... Manual, manual, manual. Um, I'm going to choose, uh, what did Bill say? Did he say 15th or 30th? I'm going to choose, I'll start with the 30th. And um, I'll manually focus for, a, what, a metre, metre and a half in front of me. F11. And, um, and I'll just move the camera. I'll just pull it to my right as I press the shutter. Here we go. When I was watching Bill, he sort of, he moved the camera all over the place. It's bad enough that sometimes I'm talking into this uh, microphone and people look at me as I'm walking along thinking, what's he doing? Now I'm talking into a microphone and waving my camera around. <laughs> Double trouble. What have I got? Let's have a look. Oh, at the moment, no. At the moment, they just look like I've not got a steady hand. They don't look intentional at all. Let me drop to a 15th, see what this does. I'm not sure. Let me take you out my pocket. Hold on. It, uh, <laughs> I might resort to just making misty pictures. <laughs> ah, so before I roll the theme music, as they say, we are walking together thanks to our extra milers and those special, special people at mpb.com. The website to go to when you're buying, selling or trading used camera kit in the UK, the US or Europe. And uh, with Christmas coming, second mention this week so far, perhaps it's time to make hints to our partners and start leaving web pages open on the browser. What do you think? Oh, darling, yes, I, 
I must have left that mpb.com page open on the 24mm lens because I was, uh, well, rather hoping that, uh, well, you know, uh, that you, you oh, or just go and buy your own gift from MPB. Wrap it ready. Uh, sort of cut out the middle person. My mum, go rest her. That's what, <laughs> that's what she used to do. So it's the, the first show of that season. A very good time to go and check what mpb.com has uh, in the new to you kit lineup for 2023. The best place to go for quality used and checked camera kit that has competitive pricing and a guarantee and you'll be buying responsibly and sustainably by being part of the circular economy. And just so I could get a fourth and in, last I looked, they were uh, still using bubble wrap in the North Pole, not at mpb.com, oh no. No, instead of that, they wrap sustainably. And uh, if you're hoping to make a few pennies in time for Christmas this year, you might want to go and see what you can sell. What, what kit have you not used this year that uh, can take up a little space in somebody else's camera bag that they'll treasure uh, for the next, well, year or years ahead. So you can go and get an instant quote and, and cash in your bank the moment it arrives and it's checked if you, if you trade and sell through MPB as well. I'll link to mpb.com on the, uh, the show page today. Right, let's try one more ICM. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to wave it, wave it around. This is quite a good place because I've got the path which is, well... It's canopied by lots of trees. So I've got interesting light to work with here. Here we go. I'm, uh, this time I've sort of, I'm rotating the camera as I press the, the shutter button. What does that look like? Hmm. Slightly more favorable. It's art, Neil, remember? It's art. We'll all be NFT billionaires by five o'clock. Today on the photo walk. The worst thing about trying to do something creative is that there's a huge period of time where nothing happens. You do really honestly think you will never take another <laughs> decent picture. <laughs> Every now and again, you, you do take a picture which you're, you're happy with and and that, that lifts your, your mood and you think, well, maybe I've still got a time to take a few more pictures. The important thing is to keep on trying and keep on carrying the camera and, and something will, will hopefully happen. Stories of life told by photographers. And today there's a reason why the show has the title it does, because Nils Jorgensen, yes, you do pronounce the J, is my guest who is revered for his street work, though he goes quietly and gently into his world to make these incredibly potent observations. And as that clip beautifully demonstrates, he, like you, like I, and probably like my other listener too, is human. And I think that's very precious. And I also think with another year almost under my belt presenting this show, he is one of the most, and I'll use the G word again, gently spirited geniuses. Or is it genii that I've had the pleasure of talking with? And I'll most certainly suggest that I consider him alongside the godfather of colour street photographer, Joel Marowitz, in that respect. So... Welcome to a unique and special kind of photography show. Unique because it's made by your letters that you send in about what making pictures means to you. And special because we get to spend time together making our photos while the letters and former guests inspire with thoughts about photography and life. Whatever you photograph with, a pro-grade camera or humble, humble smartphone, it's a show about how making pictures has you feel, what it does for us and others around us. In the mailbag today, learning that you don't have to journey far to make intriguing and interesting pictures. Yes, some more about ICM, finding Philip Larkin, venturing out into the dark and the release of something I definitely need your help to understand. And an old friend returns at the end of the show, that is. So shall we walk? Checklist out, coffee and Garibaldi's packed, check, you'll need them today, it's cold, so remember gloves, check, boots on, a laced, check, spare batteries, check, geolocation app activated if your map logging your pictures, check, oh, that has been shortened actually, where's the letter, I'll have to shorten it for next week, memory cards or spare film, check, earbuds in, check, lens caps off, let's walk. Can I say, right at the start, next week is Christmas Jumper Week. 
Uh, the 8th of December, in the UK at least anyway, is, uh, is Christmas Jumper Day, or Sweater Day, as, uh, as you'd doubtless call it in other parts of the, the world. Um, yesterday there were three packages delivered to uh, our house by, uh, by mother-in-law. One for Jack, one for our Jack, yes, one for our Thomas, one for Sam, and one for... No, nope, wait a minute, not me. Just three. Second year running now, second year. I was omitted from the tradition of receiving a Christmas jumper knitted by mother-in-law. Do you think I've offended? Have I done something wrong? <laughs> so I'll have to go and buy mine because uh, the last one was, uh, was shrunk in the wash and uh, it was more likely to fit Barney, who you might notice this week is not out with us. He's gone, he's gone for a date today with his girlfriend. But yeah, it's more likely to fit Barney than me. Um, Christmas Jumper Day supports the charity Save the Children. Uh, since 2012, millions of people like us have put on our jazziest jumpers, unless you didn't receive yours from your mother-in-law, get over it, Neil, for, for one day in December and donated two pounds to Save the Children and helped make the world better for children in the UK and around the world, I might add. Uh, now, you might have your own charity, of course, that you like to give to. But for those who can, send me a picture of you in your Christmas jumper for the show page next week. And, um, well, I'll tot up how many we get and I'll make an annual donation on your behalf because it's something that we do every single year. So um, Christmas jumpers at the ready. Hopefully by this time next week I will have found one um, that works for me. But it won't be coming from the mother-in-law. Neil, get over it. Send them to, uh, to stories at photowalk.show. Funniest or most outrageous? Tell you what, I'll send a, anywhere in the world, I'll send a flask to. And that can be uh, outrageous or funny picture as much as outrageous or funny jumper uh, or sweater. Uh, right, we'll start in the States. I'm starting with a letter from one of our extra milers. This is Michael Mixon from Washington land. I'm a, I'm a relatively new extra miler says uh, says michael tuning in from washington land the washington known for its rain and coffee instead of its monuments and insurrections i stumbled upon your podcast while casually looking for something to fill the void left by the reduced frequency of deep natter a show i'm sure you're familiar with given that uh, one of its co-hosts is sean tucker yes of course i'm familiar with that that's the first of a couple of mentions for a tucker uh, today um yeah, and Jeffrey, actually, uh, the seasoned podcaster who presents that with Sean, I'm having a chat hopefully next week with him, um, a, a podcaster interviewing a podcaster, which is probably a bit like two Doctor Who's meeting or something. I think we, we, we disappear in a puff of smoke into the uh, podcast sphere or something. So hopefully, yes, you'll hear Jeffrey on, on this show very soon. In any event... I was immediately drawn into your show, uh, says Michael, because of how different it felt from many of the other shows out there. Uh, yes, there's talk of gear. The process of turning toys into tools seems to be a, a pretty central part of this wonderful hobby. But the way the show meanders between your walks with Sabarkalot and your conversations with other photographers is just so inviting. Well, I, uh, I feel very honoured that you've said that. Thank you very much. You know me with my, my British sense of embarrassment when somebody passes me a compliment. I, I shall go and hide behind that oak that in a moment I shall turn into an ICM shot. Ah, oh, that's magnificent. Look at this. My, um, my app that I have is supposed to give me some sort of idea of how old trees are, but uh, that part of it doesn't seem to work at the moment. I'm, I'm looking at this thinking, whoa, you've got to be easily 150 possibly more years old just amazing with a i think what's that in the background that's not a robin perched in the branches even when i can't listen while actually out with my camera i find that i listen to the show a lot during various errands in my car where i tend to take multiple unnecessary detours to fit in more of an episode before arriving at my destination the show puts me in the, the same mental space that i get into while i'm out making my photographs and while some in my family may question that space i generally consider it to be a very good one yeah i will join you with uh, with that as well oh 
hang on a moment, I know I'm supposed to be doing intentional camera movement, but there's a, there's a branch just, it's almost like slicing through a frame in front of me that, that sort of is devoured by the mist behind it. I feel I want to take a non-ICM picture. Hold on. I'm going to have to up my shutter speed, though. I've waited for mist all year, uh, as some of my esteemed photo walkers in the extra mile group will say. And then on the day we've got mist, there's me choosing to do intentional camera movement. Uh, but Michael, I'm so pleased to learn that I'm, I'm not the only one, by the way, who does that car thing. Um, if there's a phone-in on my favourite radio station going on and I'm still in car, I head off into the villages close to where I live and I drive round aimlessly for sometimes quite a long time. Friends of ours have a... have a... a, a, a I suppose it's a... Is it described as a family app? Uh, it, it's... Uh, well, they, well, they can follow each other, in essence. And I still find that just a little bit strange. Um, he's on a business trip at the moment to America land and his wife was telling us she texted him the other day to comment on the bar he was having a drink in. I'd find that really spooky. If you were to follow me in my car during a juicy phone-in, you might think I was casing the neighbourhood or something. Anyway, where were we? As for what I photograph, says Michael, it's mostly just what I come across near my home especially since COVID, my, uh, my wanderings, or meanderings as I would call them, have not been particularly ambitious. Still, unlike when I was younger and thought that only the good photographic opportunities were in far off exotic places, I have learned to take a longer, closer look at my more immediate surroundings. Doing a, a photo a day project last year really helped with that. And while I haven't had the discipline to do another one of those this year, I do try to have the camera with me or the phone so that I can capture interesting compositions or plays of light as I encounter them. One thing I'd like to attempt, and inspired by the guests on your show, is the pursuit of a particular theme or subject matter in my photography, instead of just continuing to take a series of reactive images. The only problem is that I have no idea what that theme might be. Maybe after several more episodes, something will spring to mind. Or, or eggnogs, may I venture. Best regards, Mike. Well, Mike, a couple of things do occur here. I think, uh, I think you'll very much appreciate the, the chat today with Nils Jorgensen because I recognise uh, the magic this, this street photographer finds is so sometimes not on a... Well, often not on a busy street in a famous metropole somewhere in the world. Actually, he's moved to a, a very quiet part of the UK of, uh, of late, a place called Norfolk Land on the east coast. Of, uh, of England um, and often he's behind a well some of the really amusing pictures that I love from his collections are made from behind a, a dry stone wall that's bordering a field deep in the countryside not, not one person in sight addressing your exotic places comment anyway and as for the, the theme or subject matter comment well it may be something we do more of he says glint in eye in 2023 as a feature on this show a kind of watch this space moment um, but um, Mike thank you so much for being an extra miler I really appreciate your generosity of spirit in being there as a, as a supporter Michael's pictures by the way that he sent in with this, uh, with this letter will be on the show page and he is a lover it seems as I am of the lower key image where the mist the M word, the mist and the darkness of some pictures, and I mean physical light by darkness, kind of invites you, invites you right in. Like you're trying to look beyond, well, I found like I'm trying to look beyond or in and beyond the photograph. Um, it's not all low key, of course. I, I love, but I love, love, love the, uh, the, the pizza restaurant at night photograph. And that's on the show page as well. It's like a, well, David Hockney pictures, I suppose, and not necessarily night time, but it reminded me of a, a David Hockney uh, painting. Uh, well, to me at any rate. But thank you so much for your, for your pictures, and uh, I feel privileged to put those on the, the show page today. Hang on, <laughs> trying to navigate. There's a stream coming up, or is that a footpath? One of the two. Right, let's try and get past.
One of my favorite expressions in life is uh, best laid plans of mice and men. Can't remember the rest of it. But uh, the idea today of making lots of ICM seems to be rapidly being replaced by seeing these wonderful misty scenes. Um, I may have the wrong, the 12 millimeter may not be the right lens for this, but I'm using my manual, uh, well, I've, I've set it in a fully manual way anyway. Uh, and by virtue of the fact I'm using a, a manual lens, the Samyang, on the front of my X-Pro1, my Fuji X-Pro1, means that, uh, well, I've, I've selected to, to do everything manually, exposure, um, shutter speed, the whole, the whole nine yards. But there's, um, there's a, a telegraph pole with um, electricity wires shooting out of the mist that comes towards me and overhead, and it's kind of, well, this scene's kind of vignetted by some, uh, some bushes here. Uh, and I think, <laughs> again, moving away from ICM, uh, for a moment. I'm going to try and gather this picture, a more sort of mist-led picture. Let's see where we go with it. Uh, 2 50th, I've set it 2 50th, F11, um, ISO, <laughs> are we where we were last week? 640, but it kind of works, so I'll leave it there. And uh, there we go. Shall I try and... Uh, I tell you what, let's uh, move this. Let's move this ISO a bit, shall we? Go into the menu, ISO. Let's drop down to. Um, let's drop down to 400. There we go. I'll need that really for the ICM. I'm going to come back to a 30th or 15th. I think was uh, more successful, wasn't it? And uh, pop myself onto f22, and uh, we'll do the same shot, but uh, intentional camera movement. Not quite sure what that'll do because they've got the light of the sky and the darkness of the the bush that I'm photographing from behind right in front of me. Let's see what we what we have. Another one of those, left or right this time. Waving around. <laughs> I've I've no great idea of what I'm doing. Isn't that the beauty of ICM though? It's the um it's the playful expression of not having a clue of what it's gonna come out like. I agree with Bill that it must have been really hard in the days of film to... Well, it must have been really expensive <laughs> in the days of film. At least with this experimentation, it's not costing me a couple of quid every, every single click. Well, I've done a few more. Whether they'll be on the show page today, I don't know. The misty one may, may well be. Um, there are two photo walk... At the moment, there are two photo walk shows a week. Um, there's the photo walk, i.e. today... And on Mondays, we have a, a short show which uh, fits into the, um, the photo walk environment insofar as that uh, the challenges uh, usually involve you going out on some kind of photo walk. And it's called The Assignment. The show is called The Assignment. It uh, does what it says on the tin show, really. It being a challenge set by a former guest, um, usually. And on occasion, I've, I've dipped into the challenges pot too. And I think it must be my turn again very, very soon. One of the most popular assignments of late has been uh, the one a couple of weeks back set by Bill Ward, the actor, the photographer, and the proponent, yes, of intentional camera uh, movement. And I like the fact that uh, many of the pictures received for this challenge have been a result of you trying ICM for the very, 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 very first time, much like me. And, uh, well, that's what the assignment show has been all, all about. So, uh, so on that note and challenge, here is uh, one of the letters. Well, I've got a couple, actually, uh, with pictures for the assignment show, the first of which is from Gary Phillips. Hello, Neil. I just wanted to, to say how much I enjoy the podcast. <laughs> All this flattery in one week, is that, is that absolutely necessary? Should have edited it out. Thank you, Carr. Don't be miserable. But flattery does get you everywhere. <laughs> uh, oh, Neil, you're so cheap. Uh, and here, says Gary, are a couple of ICM images I made. They are the only ICMs I have attempted so far. Both were taken just a few minutes apart whilst on a dog walk with my own bark -a -lot, Sausage Dog Henry. That's a proper regal name for a sausage dog, isn't it? Henry, Henry the Sausage Dog. The sausage dogs on our walks, just to digress for a moment, Gary, they seem to have, they seem to have a, real, uh, a real dose of attitude. Even Barnes is having to rethink his run up with helicopter tail and sniff like mad strategy. 
We've had a few moments of late. Anyway, we, we live in Chorley, Lancashire land, says Gary, and a regular route we take follows a footpath by a stream along a busy motorway, the M61. So you'll probably be able to guess that the first image is of a DHL truck whizzing past on the motorway, whilst the... Uh, the second will be a little bit harder to identify. I have to be honest, I'm not sure I identified DHL, but now you say it. Uh, but I know that uh, when I tell you, I guarantee you will know uh, you've seen many of these on your walks with Sir Barkalot, the second picture he's referring to now. Uh, it's an image of the once rare, but now quite common species of tree. And no, I'm not talking about a Mally's tree. At least I don't recall Mally ever photographing one of these yet. It's the... And if you're eating breakfast, by the way, while you're listening to this, look away now. It's the poo bag tree. Interestingly, <laughs> this particular poo bag tree... What a horrible phrase had a, a rather striking red poo bag growing on it. So I, I just had to capture all of its glory. I have no idea, Gary, why people buy all these different colours. Like it's some sort of fashion accessory to, to take around with you. Just buy the biodegradable black or dark green ones. Of course, it being an intentional camera movement picture, Gary, the, the red swoosh in the picture as you moved your camera during a slow shutter speed moment, well, it looks like, it does look like, to me, abstract art. And if this is really your first attempt. I'm looking at the back of my camera over the last few minutes thinking, oh, really? Um, your pictures, Gary, f for the first that you've made, and it sounds like they are the first actual two, spot on. Um, and I, uh, I know the purists or supporters of this man, uh, who I'm about to mention, are going to recoil in horror as I say this. But I was thinking, looking in particular at the red poo bag ICM, <laughs> um, I was thinking uh, that it, well, it reminded me of a vertical version uh, <laughs> of a painting called Number Six, Violet, Green and Red, painted in 1951 by the artist Mark Rothko. <laughs> what? Neil, I almost spat my marmite on toast out there. Are you comparing the, the dog poo bag tree ICM photograph by Gary Phillips with a painting by Rothko worth $180 million? Well, yes, I am, actually. But um, only as far as those sweeping motions of movement within the frame kind of way. <laughs> I'll get my coat, shall I? Anyway, um, says Gary, I hope you like my feeble first attempts at ICM. And thanks again for the wonderful podcast. Gary, 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 Gary. Not feeble at all. And, uh, and you know what? This is what the assignments show over the last year has been all about. Finding, you know, shooting, shooting another way. My very good friend Giles um, said to me, it was a couple of weeks ago when I met up with, uh, with him last, and he said, I don't really like ICM. It's not, it's not really something that's up my street, but it's good to hear uh, people experimenting and, and, uh, and it's good to consider going out to experiment, doing something that you've never thought of doing before, even if it's just a, a few moments just to try it out. And so, Gary, thank you for that. Now, I think you've 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 hit on my um, uh, you've hit on something uh, that I absolutely l loathe seeing while I, while I'm out. Those small pooch dookie bags hanging from trees. Oh, is that not just the laziest thing? Really, just take another sort of storage bag out with you and uh, and, and find a bin uh, and don't put it under the dog's collar. I see that, and I'm thinking, why? Why on earth does the dog want to carry it anyway? Shall we move on? How's breakfast? Good? <laughs> and whilst... Uh, and your pictures, by the way, Gary, they will be on the, uh, the show page for the challenge as opposed to today's, today's episode. So go to episode 353 to see those. And whilst we're talking ICM, one from Paul Friday as well, whose pictures will be on the very, very same page. I was delighted with a conversation with Bill Ward, not least because I now know who the other Pentax person in the world is. And yes, we are a cult. Um, I was due out that weekend for a toddle with the youngest lad. Normally, I'd rather put marbles in my boots than shoot landscapes. Steady. But uh, doing some fuzzies <laughs> was fun. Uh, it even got the lad's attention off his phone to ask, what are you doing, Dad? 
He then held the dog's lead while I waved the camera about. Such moments of familial bliss are to be treasured. For the picture of the river ooze, I was trying to pan with the water. Not sure if I got it, but uh, I've been back since to have another go. Who'd ever have thought that you'd get me outside twice in one week, Neil? <laughs> the tree and the bush were multiple exposures, which I like. I'm thinking of where I can go to get more isolated trees that I can shoot with a longer lens, so you may even get me out a third time. I'll be buying OS maps next and carrying them in a plastic pouch around my neck. You will look quite the picture, Paul. Almost like we all know what we're doing, huh? But uh, humour right up my street, and I'm sending you, Paul, a flask. I know, I know, Gary. I should be sending one to you too. Your time will come. Uh, and I know I did this last week, but I'll um, I'll choose a different moment uh, from the uh, the recent show with uh, with Bill Ward. Uh, let's have our our first roll of inspiration from him, who I walked with on the show. Uh, was it three weeks back now? Yes. Um, here he is talking with great passion about making pictures and acting, and it was interesting how he uh, how he marries up the two. The more acting I do, the more photography I do, and they balance each other out perfectly. Yin yang. Yin yang. Mm. And there is a side of me that loves making stories and um, and working on a stage and working with a company of actors. I love the energy of that. I love it. Mm. And I love the unexpected nature of a rehearsal period. I love starting with nothing and finishing three and a half weeks later with a fully all singing, all dancing show. I love that. There is also a side of me that is reflective and needs peace and quiet and solitude. And photography absolutely provides that for me in abundance. And so for me, to have a balance between those two things, I feel terribly lucky. And the longer I can keep both of those things running, the better for me. It's uh, Bill Ward from uh, a few weeks uh, ago. Yes, I think we've had a lot of Bill the last couple of weeks. I'll find some new inspirational roles for next week. Look at this on the tree. These, um, these are, ah, now, are these artists bracket? Artist bracket? Artists bracket. I'm pretty sure they are. They're very velvety. Fantastic. With a, an oak leaf just fallen between the two of them. I'll make a picture. Not an ICM one. Neil, you said you were going to do ICM theme this week. I know I did, but um, so far, <laughs> it's not been wholly successful for me. Try, try again. Right. Oh, let's go to um, F11 and uh, try and get some focus. Hang on, I'll need to put you in my pocket for this. Just pop you in there. Um, I'm manually focusing with... Um, is it on? doesn't feel like it's on. Hang on a moment. With the manual focus assist on peak, it doesn't seem to be... I've got focus peak highlights high. And, yeah, so it should be on, but it doesn't... Oh, no. This could, my entire collection of photographs this week could be uh, out of focus. What's new, Neil? Don't you start. <laughs> and it's so cold. I'm just trying to move the, the focus ring. We're down to two degrees. And uh, I haven't brought my, my gloves out with me. I have a, a few nice sets of gloves for these cold days. I wasn't quite prepared for, for this one today. Uh, right, TikTok, TikTok. No, not that TikTok. That is something that I promise you I will never be trying in 2023. I'm not doing TikTok. Um, it's time for our, our guest, Nils Jorgensen. And after Nils... I want to uh, share with you news of uh, our big listener survey. It's two years, two years since we did our last one. And uh, I'd like you to help me shape the show for the next uh, 12 months. But uh, yes, first, Niels Jorgensen, part one. Well, what can I say? But there are, there are street photographers and there are street, new word I think here, observationalists, if, um, if that's allowable. If you like story, story miners, there we go. Someone who finds uh, gold in those there corners of everyday life. 
um, that I know for certain that I often miss. I think I see stuff, but um, Nils sees in an entirely different way to most humans. And it may seem a, an odd comparison, but I'm going to try this for size. Let me tell you about my, uh, my uncle Jan from Holland, who just seemed to have this ability um, to scour the land for money. Whenever we went out with, uh, certainly on holidays, with uh, Uncle Jan and uh, Auntie Daphne and the two boys, as two families, we, we would uh, we'd, we'd go out somewhere and, and Uncle Jan would, would manage always to find... It was always a £10 note. Was it? Yeah, I think it was always a £10 note. And in those days, uh, a £10 note would take you a long, long way when it came to eating ice cream. So we'd be able to do it for, the, for bo both families... He'd, he'd be like the, uh, the money finder and pay for the ice creams for the entire day. He seemed to be able to, it was like a, a magic ability to, to spot and observe where the rest of us couldn't. So Nils is, I think, a little bit like my Uncle Jan, except the currency that Nils finds is photographs, uh, photographic moments, often comedic, not always, not exclusively, uh, but I, I would say pretty much uh, always a, a nod to humanity. He is, a, he is a photographer's photographer, and like Philip Larkin, the poet I mentioned at the start, who will pop up during our conversation today as well, he doesn't shout. He, he lets the eyes of the world and those that enjoy his work, essentially, like I have through another photographer, um, find him. And so I'm really pleased that my uh, pair of eyes have been reintroduced to Nils work. Um, he is and has uh, one of the most gentle natures. And I, I wonder if that's what makes him so refreshing to both talk with and listen to. So this is part one of my conversation today with Nils Jorgensen. Nils. 40 years, pretty much, making street photographs and other kinds of photographs, as we'll discuss, which means you started at a time where, where YouTube hadn't introduced you to, to a medium, where it was perhaps a little harder to find lots of material to, to envelop yourself in. So, so where did the interest and drive begin for you? And Well, in both street photography and photography as a medium, I, I, know, I know there was an element of dad involved. Yes, he was. It started at school. I think I, well, well, I started with my dad, as you say, who um, was always buying cameras and he had a lot of photography magazines and photography books. I think I remember asking him, you know, what, what's this lens do and so on. And he, he was he was an excellent uh, teacher and he, I think he liked the cameras as much as anything else. And <laughs> gave, he used to buy, he got interested in Haspel ads and, and, and he had all, and I remember when Olympus came out with the um, one system, he bought that very excited, but it was a small camera. Mm. And then he bought Olympus XA, which is another even smaller camera. And then he got into Leicas, the old Leicas, the original Leicas from 1950s. And so before the M series. And so, so the M, he M, gave, M3s and the... the yeah, the, yeah, well, see, there was the three Fs and stuff. The oh, three, okay. it, it, it wasn't even called M in those days. It was just uh, three. And then he gave me, to start off, he said you should learn about exposure and focus and everything. Yeah. So he... he yeah. Gave me one of these. Uh, it sounds very luxurious, but it was actually a very basic little camera, which not the fancy M6s and so on or whatever. The oh, M M4s. It was predating those. And he he said, "Here's a light meter," and he taught me how to take readings with a light meter. And to he sent me out with a, this little Leica with a 50 millimeter lens on it, and uh, he had to focus with a separate little window. And it was it was really good to learn all about that aspect of photography, the technical side of things. And and that's that's what I I used as I was I was still at school. And and I used that a lot. Just this basic little camera. And um, even though at that stage you could buy, you know, automatic cameras and uh, Pentaxes, you know, the, and so on. Did you take part in things like the school newspapers? Uh, I mean, you mentioned school. I wonder whether that's that's right. I, I joined the school darkroom. I think I became in the end the head of the, the school darkroom. <laughs> it was a great little room we had with a larger and all you needed for to to develop your film and print your your photographs then i started submitting pictures to the school magazine every every term the school published a magazine and um i just ended up photographing 
everything just street photographs, really, uh, although I didn't know at the time what I was doing. And also photographing, you know, various sort of rugby matches and so on. And, and it was a very, it was a, it was a wonderful school, um, King's School, Canterbury. You know, the whole, the whole, our whole lives were, were involved with the school. So I was photographing everything that was going on, really. And just, um, I was always great to see my pictures published you yeah. know, in the magazine, in the school magazine. I, I'm probably going to make a giant leap now, Nils, between uh, that time and the, the move to Nairobi for the Associated Press in, in East Africa. Mm. But mm. there's a bit in between, I know. You probably should furnish us with that because you don't just go from this, uh, this amazing experience at school and then straight into East Africa. Or, or, or do you? No, I went, I went to college first. There was, sorry, College of Art and Design. Yeah. Where, in fact, Martin Parr, I think, went. Really? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know Yeah, that. he did. Right. I think he, yeah, he was there a few years before me. And, um, I, I, I kind of enjoyed it, but I left after I finished the course and uh, I'm not quite sure. I think you had to give a talk about photography to the, the whole, to the class or something. And I just got more and more worked up about things I had to do. And I just wanted to get out and actually do some real and photography. photography. And, uh, and I remember going into Associated Press, AP, and um, meeting... Horst Fass, who was um, the picture editor there at the time, yeah. and he said, I like my pictures, but I hadn't got any hidden, but he worked for me in London. I said, well, I'm going to go on holiday when well, my dad was still living in Nairobi. And he said, well, that's interesting because our guy there, has, our stringer there has just left. So get in touch with our officers there. And that's how I, that was one of my, yeah, got some, a lot of work, started my first work in working at Associated Press East Africa. Fantastic. What, what a wonderful way to put uh, creative eye drops in the, the, the sights and the sounds of that uh, amazing city, which, which has mm. changed much, I know, over the, mm. the past few years in particular. At, at that time, what was your, your memory of, of working there? Well, I didn't know what I was doing, so <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, winging it. And I was really dropped in the, in the deep end because one of my first jobs was was to go, or well, they sent me to Uganda, where they were having an election. Boti was running for president, and I was, it was quite difficult to work there. And as I said, I barely knew what I was doing. I was just photographing the elections and so on. And it was quite um, dangerous as well, because the, the soldiers were running around in the streets and uh, firing rifles and so on. And I, I got a, a lot of help from Brian Barron, who used to be a reporter of Brian Barron for the BBC, he said, well, I said, well, I don't know how to get my films back <laughs> to, to Nairobi. And, and he, he offered to take my film back on the BBC plane that was flying out and so on. Brian Barron, he's, he's very helpful. And I remember arriving back in Nairobi and seeing on the front page of the Herald Tribune my pictures, which was quite, yeah, quite a, exciting. A thrill. I mean, obviously <clears throat> things did go right there because um, you joined Rex Features in the early 80s. Um, yes. And that took you into politics and royalty and art and sport and show business and all the other things you're expected to do. Um, mm, mm. A, a bit of a rounded education and um, uh, Rex became something else. It's Shutterstock now, isn't it? But mm, um, yeah. this is two decades prior to digital. So it was quite a, mm. a game. Did you find yourself in the in the deep end? Yes, I, I'd originally um, taken to Rex uh, pictures of my street photographs. Yeah. I just took them. I had an interview with uh, Frank Selby, the, the, the boss at Rex Features, and he loved the street photographs. And he said, oh, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we like these. And uh, I, took, so I did a couple of jobs for them, and then he offered me a staff job. And the, the kind of work I was doing, I was thinking, oh, I'm, he's going to send me out to go and do street photographs, and that's going to make me a, a living. But that wasn't quite the way it worked out. And it was, I remember doing one of the first jobs I did was... Uh, Elizabeth Taylor's birthday party and all the celebrities, it was like a nightclub and I was hanging out just doing photographs of people arriving for the birthday party and uh, Richard Burton turned up and all these sort of <laughs> people. I've never photographed like that kind of event before in my life and I remember being astonished by the amount of, if you've ever been to a sort of gathering of press, taking flash photographs of celebrities and so on, it's quite a, all the lights, and the flashes yeah, going yeah. off are quite, yeah. it's quite a dramatic thing to witness for the first time. I also had no idea of the kind of getting pictures into the office quickly. I sort of thought, well, you know, I'll just roll up the next day with, with my roll of film. And the next, uh, the next, I think the next morning I got Frank Selby on the phone saying, where are the pictures? And I said, well, you know, 
they're, they're still here in my camera, you know. So he said, get back to the office now, you know. And it was, it was quite, yeah, I was, I was so green that I had no idea what I was doing. But I got some good pictures and uh, that was the main thing. So you had to, you had to learn quite quickly then at yeah, that point, yeah, didn't you, really? Yeah. Um, well, but, but I mean, it's from then on, I, 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 I was photographing all sorts of yeah, things. And I remember yeah. doing, just doing the party political conferences and down in, in, in uh, the conservative one in, in, down in Brighton. And, um, the reason why I mentioned that is because there's two things. One, I was I was learning how to photograph on color transparency in very in color fluorescent lighting, very low light, and so on. Yeah. Again, I, I I was very pleased with the work I did. And when Mrs. Thatcher died many years later, it was one of those photographs that the the Times used the whole of the front page. Your pictures. My picture yeah. from from 1982, which I was quite pleased with. I'm trying to piece together the the history, Nils, of of that time. Of course, during the eighties, um, there was the bombing of the yeah. of the hotel in in yeah. Brighton. Were, were you? Yeah, no, well, I wasn't. You there weren't there for that, that one, but no. uh, yeah, that was that was. I've spoken to a few photographers who've talked about mm. that particular night. Um, well, let's turn to street work then. I I wonder with street photographers whether you have to be in the right place when you go out to photograph, or whether Nils, you let the experiences come to you. A street photography has always been something which which I've never really made a conscious decision to do. It's just I thought, well, I better take a camera with me in case I see something <laughs> which I like the look of. And this goes back to, to my school time. I used to always just wander around with a camera. And at the same time, when I started working, doing sort of news and politics and so on and celebrities, I always used to carry a, a small little camera with me. And back in the days of film, it was more complicated because you had to have you put a film or a film your camera and you you had to, you couldn't take it out mid roll and so i had to have a separate little camera and i used to carry the camera my favorite camera for years and years was the olympus xa which was such a small little camera and you could just have it in your pocket you could continue to take photographs so that was your that was your street camera uh, alongside yeah, yeah. the professional ones yeah, slung so over your carry, carry so. around my my great big heavy mm. motorized cameras with mm. with long lenses and they used to shoot color transparency with one camera one and camera, black yeah. and white in the other, the other yeah. and you'd have to take pictures of things and they wanted black white and color and so that was quite tricky in itself and then of course as i wandered around at the same time i would just take going backwards and forwards from home or catching the train or or even driving the you know in the car or something, I'd, I'd have a have a little Olympus XA in my pocket. What got used the most? <laughs> well, I think my <laughs> my big my big uh, work cameras got used far more. Oh but, right, uh, I was wondering whether you might say, well, little did they know, but the uh, the no no <laughs> it, 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 it's. And the, and the strange thing is that I remember being almost embarrassed. You know, I'd walk along the street with my colleagues and I'd, I'd sort of take a picture after having just done, you know, the Prime Minister in Downing Street or something like that or some celebrity, Hollywood celebrity. <laughs> then I'd suddenly start taking photographs of something, you know, some dark corner in, in London and, and they'd think, what, what am I doing, you know? And at that time, I, I had no explanation. I just said, well, I, I quite like what's happening there and... I almost felt embarrassed about it because you 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 weren't photographing anything obvious that was newsworthy or would make the papers the next day or anything like that. But it sounds like a calling that you had. That's putting it too grandly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just I just thought, well, I'd, I'd better take a picture of this because yeah. it's it's interesting. I talk often on the show about the headspace we find ourselves in when we're when we're photographing and, and the release that, that that brings to many people. And street photography seems to be one of those genres that people use for that experience, particularly at this juncture in our history. Uh, I wonder whether it does the same thing for you or, or you really don't think of it that way, whether you do go into an entirely different world when you're, you're seeing things on the street. No, I, I don't. No. I just have a camera with me all the time and you could see something at any point and you know i could be having a, a conversation with somebody or or just going about my life really yeah. and i don't get into some separate headspace or anything like that the only thing i would say it's almost like a burden because you have you you're going around and you in some ways that you'd almost want to be relieved of having to to worry <laughs> about seeing something but in the old days when film uh with film i'd actually sometimes on occasion run out of film and you get a sense of panic because you, you almost want to sort of go around with, with 
blinkers on because when you haven't got anything to record something with then yeah. you, you sense a panic you know you, it was and, and and today if a camera battery runs out or these days you you have thousands of photographs on one one card so you don't you don't uh, run the risk of running out of of space or running out of film but um, the camera might run out of batteries it's interesting <laughs> you talk about a burden nils because um i was introduced to your partner just uh, a little while before we started the uh, i i only saw the sort of very top half move oh, yeah. past <laughs> you but i want i wonder what your your partner feels about this let's call it burden um are you impossible to walk the streets with in case you should see something continually it's it's yeah you have to have your partner has to be patient because sometimes <laughs> yeah. she's walking ahead of me and, and i'm all the way back there photographing something or or she's also quite good at getting out of the way you know suddenly oh, see something yeah. and you know she knows that it's best to hang back or, or or wait or just stand at a corner somewhere and wait till i've finished yes i would imagine i'm quite it's quite uh you could get impatient waiting for me to to take a picture well, it and, seems uh, to me she has the instincts as well yes yes yeah. and in fact actually i've been thinking that i should really label some photographs pictures that my partner's seen she says oh look, that looks interesting and she's right I've, I've taken pictures that have actually been spotted for me so i've got an extra pair of eyes yeah, yeah. Uh, some pictures should be credited to to liza my partner i think <laughs> well there's there's a wonderful humor to your pictures and work some of the pictures that immediately strike me is your fascination with with human nature and how daft we can be uh, as humans well, without there's no cruelty in your pictures and actually that's a very important point i think isn't it nils because um Street photography can be cruel, it, ob mm. observational and cruelty. It sort of it runs a, a, a tight line, doesn't it? Really, mm. Mm. Uh, and I, I wonder how you uh, you approach that. For, for instance, we would never see poverty porn in in your pictures at all. Mm. Yes, it, it's. It, I think it maybe in, in the early days I realised that you can make fun of people quite easily, maybe, and I think it's more interesting to try and capture some other aspects of of human nature. It's surprising, as, as, I, as I quite often surprise myself, you sometimes see something which is very um, fleeting and you, you almost think really you're wasting your time. But then afterwards you kind of see there was, was something there that, that is maybe very subtle. It's difficult to point out you know at the time mm. and I sometimes you know people do a lot of workshops and take people around showing and I've, I've done those in the past and it's it almost be be embarrassing I think to I'll find sometimes it's embarrassing to take people out and walk around with them to, because you don't sometimes have any idea what might be interesting and you also think well why am I photographing that and you don't even know yourself until you've actually analyzed it later and looking at photographs like on a contact sheet or, or, or later is one of the most important aspects of, of the whole thing because you then dig out these little scenes that you've seen and, and uh, it's uh, not always obvious at the time. That's interesting because I think Joel Myrowitz with his work with the flowers, for example, years later he goes back into <coughs> his, his, uh, his back catalogue, his library and finds that many of these images sort of he, he found himself photographing things that later on actually linked up and mm. he wasn't to know at the time and you sound that, that you have a very similar way of working in that respect yes I'm, I've always thought that if I become old and incapacitated and I can't walk you know, I, think I could just go back to my archive and, and go through them so I'm looking forward to that in some respects because it'd be, it's very interesting to look back at as you say things that you photographed yeah. maybe 20 years ago or 40 years ago and and find a whole lot of images which at the time you either thought that didn't work the way I thought it was going to work and yet it was it, you often build up an image in your mind and then you look at it when you've later and you think well, that that didn't work or you you've taken pictures that you just without asking yourself why but you you then find there's something there that's actually quite interesting later Nils Jorgensen and uh, there's more to come from him today and I'll be talking with him a little bit more on Sunday's Extra Mile show plus I, I think I I may try well I've started already so uh, I, I may try and complete something I started to write about poetry and uh, its relationship with what we do when we, we make pictures after my conversation with, uh, with Nils I was inspired in all kinds of ways and um, following today's photo walk I shall be, um, I shall be heading into to town to uh, buy myself um, a Philip Larkin poetry book so uh, there we go inspiration of a very different sort this week 
And I, I wonder, actually, whether after you've heard him talk about Philip, whether you might as well. Um, send your pictures and your stories. I haven't mentioned this today yet, and I should, because they are what drives this show. Send them to stories at photowalk.show. Stories at photowalk.show. If you're sending pictures, 2,000 pixels wide, please. Um, you don't have to send pictures. It's great to get stories from you as well. And sometimes the things you say about photography, that's enough um, without the pictures. But if you, if you like to share the both, then there's a place waiting on the show page for you. Um, send them to, as I said before, the email address, stories at photowalk.show. My thanks to our extra milers who, who walk and go the extra photo walk mile to support this show with a modest monthly or annual donation, which means your kindness and your amazingness uh, goes toward paying for the music licensing and the hosting and the studio costs and all the other, all the other running out outgoings that we have so it really does make a world of difference having you here. And without you and your, your belief, honestly, it wouldn't be possible to produce the show every week the, the way that it is. So thank you. As we head into 2023, it's going to be even more important. Um, to support this building project, this weekly walk, this glimpse into to people's lives through the literal lens of their cameras and generosity of sharing in terms of um, the amazing personal stories you send in, uh, go to photowalk.show and you can click the orange support the, uh, the show button. And because you go the extra mile, I will go the extra mile as well. Uh, with my weekly Extra Mile show of a Sunday, which is going to become something even more special in 2023 because it's likely to move to a midweek slot. So there'll be essentially, for those who support the show, uh, there'll be two uh, walks of a week. Uh, this one's slightly longer than the, the Extra Mile one, but the Extra Mile is going to have a few little bits and bobs in it, uh, which I think you're going to find um, really inspirational. And on that note, on that note... I'm going to cross to my studio persona to reveal something very special that I hope you may join in with over the next couple of weeks, my esteemed photo walker friend. As this show enters its third year, I think we've developed and shaped into a programme that I, I believe, I hope, has a, a true unique nature. The photo walk engages ears internationally once a week or twice if you're an extra mile supporter. It's become a, a walking, travelling companion for many. Mental health and well-being continues to be a really important element of the presentation too. Our last survey was just prior to Christmas 2020 when, for most, the world was a very different place. For me and those living in the UK, a uh, Covid vaccine had just been administered to its first recipient, 91-year-old Margaret Keenan. Lockdowns had become regional, although Prime Minister Boris Johnson was on the verge of nationally cancelling Christmas. In the annual televised Christmas Day speech, my late Queen, her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II spoke of hope when she said we continue to be inspired by the kindness of strangers and draw comfort that, even on the darkest nights, there is hope in the new dawn. Our journeys have been mixed and unsure at times, though photography, I think, for many who listen, subscribe and write to what is now the Photo Walk Show, has remained a constant companion. And as I and my other listener have learned, it is a mental lifeline. These boxes we carry, the pictures we make, the stories we tell, often say how we feel and are a true legacy. So at the end of 2022, please, would you lend me 365 seconds of your time to join in with a new survey on the website two years on? and it will help develop ideas, adapt and build the show for the next 365 days of 2023. For those who wish to leave an email address, participants will be entered into a draw to win a £50 Amazon voucher or equivalent in your world region. So that's the big survey, if you like, for this programme, The Photo Walk Show. It's on the website, photowalk.show. You'll find it in the menu bar right at the top, and I look forward to reading what you believe should happen to some of the show elements. 
and how I can continue to serve you best on the podcast in the new year. Looking forward with, uh, with an ounce of trepidation to the feedback that's uh, received from that, uh, that survey. Uh, really important to, to how the show um, moves along in the, the next year. And I quite like the idea that, um, that you're part of that decision. The extra milers uh, last week or during the week got the, the chance to make a, a few of the... I think they've shaped the decisions that has uh, subsequently become um, the, the survey for, for this year. So my thanks to the production team, really, that are the extra milers. We have, um, we have our monthly Zoom happening on... Uh, it's Wednesday, actually. It's usually the first Tuesday of the month, but uh, there's some Christmassy things going on, which has made Tuesday impossible uh, before Christmas. So we're doing Wednesday. And uh, part of the, the meeting, um, I'm hoping that uh, we're going to share... Uh, there'll be enough of us that will share uh, two, maybe three, or one is fine, uh, pictures that we feel has um, somehow identified the year or, or, or maybe just our favourites from the year, pictures that, that really show how we feel about photography from the, the past 12 months. So that's, uh, that's on Wednesday for those of you who are joining us on our, our monthly Extra Miler Zoom uh, that we have. Right, this letter now... I have been meaning to use this for quite some time, but um, as the nights have uh, now drawn in and in a week where we're talking about gently walking the streets and enjoying the, the calm process of observation, I want to uh, share Peter Upton's project with, uh, with pictures, of course, on the, uh, the show page today. Peter, you probably thought I'd forgotten about you, but no, not at all. Hi, Neil. I'm starting out on a new project and wanted to get your thoughts on the start I've made. The project started from a picture I took of the shambles in York. Now, my other listener may not know at all what the shambles is, so let me just fill in the blanks for you. It's uh, not what is commonly thought of as the mess our more wizened leaders seem to lead you and I into. Politics, Neil, steer clear. Yes, sorry. The shambles is sometimes uh, used as a, a general term for the maze of twisting, narrow lanes which make York, quote, so charming. And it is. Oh, no. Why do... I'm sorry if you're eating your breakfast. People with horses along these paths, I think you know what I'm getting at. Oh, start again. <laughs> um, which make York, quote, so charming. Uh, at its heart is the lane actually called The Shambles, arguably the best preserved medieval street in the world. It was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of William the Conqueror in uh, 1086. In fact, uh, he used to do all his Christmas shopping there. True story. We went to The Shambles, actually, on a school trip, and uh, the overriding memory of that trip was the guide who spent... I would have been... What would I have been? Ten years old, I think... Uh, was, was the guide who spent a good quarter of an hour telling us about uh, how people would, uh, would slop out, so to speak, uh, onto the streets below because each floor in these medieval homes, each floor sort of sticks out a little bit more as it goes up. Whoop, up a bit, out a bit, up a bit, out a bit. And so you kind of overlook the street uh, below you. Um, but it's very much like... Um, like a real-life Diagon Alley. It's a very, very special place. Uh, despite, <laughs> despite the thought of people throwing you-know-what out uh, onto William the Conqueror below, just as he's minding his own business, doing, uh, doing his Christmas shopping, or having a pop into Starbucks to, to clean up. Um, so there we go. <laughs> a shambolic way of describing the shambles. And a, good, and a very good reason why I didn't become a history teacher. Anyway, back to Peter. This is a scan of the, the darkroom prints from the four or five negatives of the shambles at night. And uh, once I saw the pictures, says Pete, printed in the darkroom, I loved them so much that a project was born. Isn't that just the most fantastic way of finding a project? You do something not really thinking too much about it. You do it because you just... You know, want to do it, it's enjoyable, you've taken your camera out and you thought, why don't I just try X? And then suddenly, boof, an idea, a light bulb, a huge light bulb comes on. 
My, I, my idea, says Peter, is to shoot ancient streets at night on 4-5. I've taken the project to my hometown of Scarborough now, photographing the bolts in colour on digital. You'll need a bit of history again, won't you? Stand by. The bolts are a series of narrow, poorly lit passageways running intermittently behind Scarborough's seafront cafes and amusement arcades. In 1225, Henry III, who loved the penny arcades, apparently, especially the tuppenny shover and air hockey, Henry the Henry III made a grant of 40 oaks, that was the currency of the day, to construct a new quay and houses that should have been really the end or signalled or 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 sentenced the uh, that's the correct word the end of the bolts it would have all come down but fortunately they survived and can still be seen today see <laughs> it's like a history lesson today so back to peter again with the colour addition to his project. Do you think, Neil, I should add these to the project and make it multimedia, as in film and digital? Also, would you leave them in colour or convert everything to black and white? Lastly, I'm struggling for a name for this project. The two working titles so far have been Past Nights or Streets of the Past. But any suggestions from you and uh, those who listen would be very warmly welcomed, as words are not my strong point, uh, being dyslexic. Uh, I did check in with Peter whether he minded me um, leaving his uh, letter as open as that, and he said, fine, yeah, and it works. That's why he's asking for, for the advice. In fact, as he says in the letter, feel free to share any and all of this with your other listener. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Well, first up... Um, you will find three neg scans and then three digital colour pictures on the show page so you can see what I've seen and what Peter shared. And of course, it's all, well, it's all very subjective, isn't it? Uh, and as I, I say these words from just my feelings, my other listener may well be shaking their head and sharing entirely different thoughts. I don't know. But you did ask... So here's my tuppenny halfpenny's worth, as they would have said in the arcades of the bolts. For me, Peter, love, 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 love the black and whites and the, uh, the feeling of, of that, that medium. Um, the fact I can, well, I, it just, it feels to me like you're taking your time in a, in a very different sense. Um, a more perhaps measured perhaps a collected sense and i think that's the i don't know it, it just with the the ages being considered of the buildings etc i know it came a long long time before the invention of the camera but i don't know it just feels like it's the it feels like it's the right expression the right media the right medium uh, for for this project and then title well title uh i like past nights um i did start to get a bit daft with other spectre type titles such as whispers of the night um which uh which even barney looked at me with a broad sense of dissatisfaction i'm sure as i as i repeated it to him i often do talk to barney i really do during the day pass things by him and he just looks at me uh, with that does that mean it's time to eat or is it a walk i'm not quite sure one of the two either will do um, so I'm going to go with your I'm going to go with your past nights. Though if you have a better suggestion, and um, you're listening right now, thinking or saying out loud, Pete, I've got a great idea. Please send it in via email, or maybe better still, within the comments on the show page, because I'm sure uh, Peter may check in with uh, with those as well. Um, it it does, uh, but I tell you what, it does take a it does take a little courage to do projects at night. Safety is obviously very important. We've talked about that before, haven't we? When you make projects at night, safety being one of those things you do have to, well, personal safety and kit safety, uh, two of those things you, you, you need to consider. And I know, I know me with my imagination, uh, be taking me in all kinds of directions when it came to, to what, what lurks in the shadows. Oh, hang on. Whoa, wait a minute, back up. Hiding in the shadows. Ooh, could that be a title? Hmm. Anyway, courage. Courage, yes. 
you um, you do have to to have that but this is a super super project and i'm really looking forward to what comes next with it um i was thinking and let me play a role of inspiration from the Mancunian photographer Simon Buckley, who uh, who loves nightfall photography. Do you remember him talking about, it was quite a while back now, but uh, a project called Not Quite Light. His incredible project made after most of us turn in for the night. He's out there with a camera. I'll link to it on the show page, but here's um, Here's a few moments of uh, Simon Buckley. Like I always uh, tell the anecdote of when I was on a, a Old Mill Street, which is just uh, near Ancoats, just off the city centre in Manchester. I think it was May, around about 4, 4.15 in the morning. And it's a long straight road that comes off um, the, the inner ring road. And I could see this woman, probably in the mid 60s or older, just shuffling towards me with a little shopping trolley type stroller thing. And I was standing next to my tripod near a pharmacy and there were some concrete bits of seating and she came to a halt there and it seemed absurd given that we were the only two people on the street and 20 feet away from me so not to say good morning to her and I said so what how come you're here and she said well I've just finished my night shift and I've missed my bus so I have to walk home it's about two miles she said and I remember thinking that's going to take you ages speed you're walking and I kind of felt how awful it is that after working all night she also had to walk home anyway she stood up and uh, set off on a journey again and I went back to my tripod and I looked up a few moments later and I swear she disappeared and I to this day have no idea where she went because it's a long straight road and at the speed she was walking she couldn't have turned off it and it almost felt as if I'd perhaps talked to an apparition and uh, although I'm sure there's a very conventional answer to it moments like that appeal to me because in a way you engage with that childlike magic the potential that strange things can happen and it takes you out of your adult self a little bit it returns you to that belief that something extraordinary is around the corner that we are all on the threshold of a portal that's simon buckley and i'll link to his uh, the full edition on the the show page today actually i was reading um about Simon only recently and uh, I didn't mention this in the uh, I don't think I mentioned it in the program at uh, at any rate but um, there was a moment uh, or a particular picture rather a moment which he spent on a really rainy street in in Manchester looking down at a, a railway bridge and he didn't uh, I don't think at the time he had his um, he had his camera uh, with him, we did talk about the picture, but I didn't talk about the the next part. I'm about to tell you. So, so he had his he had his um, smartphone, and he made this picture of this just sort of downpour, this rain, and it was a picture that was picked up by none other than uh, one of my personal heroes, Stephen Fry, uh, who described it as a picture that looked uh, a lot like the painter Lowry. Uh, and if you're not sure who Lowry is, then I will leave a uh, note to self, leave a link on the, the show page to some of uh, Lowry's pictures. Um, when somebody like Stephen Fry takes time to, to look and comment upon your work, that must be the, one of the, 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 the ultimate... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? How you say in English? Uh, privilege is the wrong word. It'll come to me in a moment. Anyway, um, if you'd like to send your pictures in, Send them, please, to stories at photowalk.show. We also have a Facebook group that you can uh, join in with. Uh, We have the Facebook page and we have the group. Uh, And in the group, some wonderful pictures and stories are are left. And uh, I'll endeavour to uh, to delve a little bit deeper into our Facebook group in the the next year to come because uh, there's some wonderful, wonderful... Uh, people in there sharing sharing their work and sharing their thoughts so thank you if you have been one of those over the last uh, year and a bit right the second i've just noticed my my hands have gone a strange shade of red it's so cold today oh it's the first proper cold day it really is the first proper cold photo walk i know there are some of you and Kelly, you will be one of them saying, hang on a moment, in Canada land, it's been snowing for the past month. What are you talking about? True. Uh, right, the second part of my conversation with the uh, the street photographer, Niels Jorgensen, I, I, and, and I want to, to talk about uh, with him those moments that we, we doubt ourselves, um, those moments where we think, oh, has the magic gone? Has the magic left me? A lot, along with other things as well. And uh, I'd like to talk about this wonderful book project 
that I hope will, uh, very much hope will see the light of day and not simply a uh, designer's workbench in 2023. So uh, here's part two of my conversation with the incredible Nils Jorgensen. I think there's a wonderful juxtaposition with the way you work and the way you are as a person, Nils. Um, I look at your work and... <laughs> I'm hoping I'm going to pick the right expression here. But you remind me, if I were to use, okay, if I were to use a little bit of footballification during this time <laughs> of the World Cup when we're recording this, you remind me, you do remind me a bit of a striker because you're very, you're very alert to the arrival of the, um, of the ball at moments. Um, I mean, you notice things like the black and white picture of the woman walking past a shop window that's been painted with swirly, swirly white lines. You know, when you, you sort of mm. um, when they're se selling or preparing for a sale and mm. they don't want people to look through the window. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the woman that's walking past with the, with the swirly, swirly permed haircut, which perfectly matches the window. Mm. Uh, I mean, she's walking across a window that when I look at the picture, I'm thinking, well, well, that's four, maybe maybe five feet, if that, maybe six feet at the most. It's it's a short, it's a very small window, and mm. you've got to do so many things aside from focus and expose and compose and all those technical things. There's a scene coming at you that you've matched up within seconds, and I mm. find that an extraordinary skill. What's going through your mind is well, take that picture as that woman's coming towards you. Well, that, that was taken some 40 years ago yeah, or something yeah, like that yeah, and uh, yeah. there are some things that often i think all photographers maybe go back to and and these swirly windows <laughs> are always rather interesting they're, they're, i think maybe you could probably do a whole project a book of just those swirly <laughs> windows couldn't you because they're actually very beautiful in some yeah. respects and they're, and they're all done by people just wanting to cover up the window and yeah. but yet they and then people add little little doodles on them or something from the inside which can be quite amusing but then Sometimes you you hope that something something extra will come into it, and and that again is just luck, and you don't know how it's going to work out until you look at the pictures afterwards, and you see something maybe the woman approaching, and you you think okay, there's something maybe might work here, and you combine this sort of I, I love these windows, then you add this extra element which makes it work a bit more than just the, the window itself. But there's a comedic element to it, Nils. I mean, you yeah. are, you're, you're, you're like a comedian with a perfect one-liner to fit a scene, often. Mm -hmm. I mean, that cat jumping from, I mean, that's another, I think, another photograph that, that is taken out of the archive that I saw in the film. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the thought, to, the thought to even look up before a cat jumps from rooftop to rooftop, which is probably mm -hmm. a five or six metre jump, mm -hmm. you weren't to know that would happen. Do you, do you feel that luck plays a great part in, in your photography? Or or maybe you invite the, the luck because you are so strong with your observations of life, of things happening around you? Well, there's a favourite quote of mine, or a quote that I like to use of Martin Parr, mm. who says, it's all luck, but it's luck that's earned. Mm. So you have to have a camera, you have to be out there, you have to, a number of things, unless you're actually out there with a camera, and then, you know, there's all the other elements you have to be able to get it in focus, get it exposed and have the right lens and so on. So there's a, a lot of elements that come come into it. Uh, there's a humanity also to, to your work, the wonderful potent picture of the couple kissing and meeting each other out the pub. A bit more recent, that, that particular mm, mm. picture. Absolutely doused by the, the ardent mm, mm. You know, rainfall that's happening, the downpour that's happening. That's a, a human picture as opposed to a comedic picture. Mm. What are you looking for when you're, you're trying to source those sort of photographs? Well, I think it's, it's finding some element of human nature which can be photographed. Mm. And a picture like that, well, I find it extraordinary, you know, that <laughs> that even happened you know that it's like something out of a film you know the you know how often do you see that happen even you know and and how often would you be there to see it and it's and it's um such a joyous image and yes beautiful beautiful and, moment um yeah yeah it's just a matter of being there to take the picture you're very <laughs> humble yeah I, fi I find you very humble in all this nils i really do when you go out, will there be days where you come back with nothing? Or do you generally find that you always come back with something because the world is a wonderful place to witness? I think the, 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 the worst thing about trying to do something creative is that there's a huge periods of time where nothing happens. You do really honestly think you will never take another <laughs> decent picture. Every now and again, you, you do take a picture which you're, you're happy with and 
and that that lifts your your mood and you think well maybe i've still got a time to take a few more pictures the important thing is to keep on trying and keep on carrying the camera and and something will will hopefully happen actually one of the marvelous driving inspirations i i see in your work nils is the is the simple message that street photography doesn't have to mean a big metropolitan environment i give you llamas over a wall or a cow that's popping its head above a wall next to a next to a road sign the whole world is a canvas, isn't it? I think we get sometimes a, a little bit glued into thinking that you have to be in a busy place to make street photographs. Yes, I, I, I'm glad you, you think so. It's, it's, I just found that when I was on holidays in different parts of the world or, or different parts of the, of the country in, in England, I wasn't going to stop taking photographs. And <laughs> so you just carry on. Yeah. The, the term street photography, I guess, uh, is one that's always being been open to interpretation, but I'm going to define what street photography is as far as I'm concerned, and and, and that's that. It can be llamas in, in a field or, or a cow in a field as, as much as Oxford Street, and you don't have to, uh, it doesn't have to be that particular type. And, and you know, you, you can look into the history of, of street photography, you know, Cottage and, and Winogrand, they, they took photographs in all sorts of different places. And um, Cottage, he was, he was photographing all sorts of things and, and he's has always been a huge inspiration. So I'm not going to be ruled by, by any, no. by my geography. Or, no. I've moved out of London in the last year and a half and live in Norfolk now. And uh, I'm slowly, I guess, <laughs> continuing to build up a, a pictures that have, less of Oxford Street or, or whatever you might imagine. And reflect your life now. Street photography now, London Street <coughs> Photography, the World Atlas of Street Photography, the Street Photographer's Manual. There's just some of the books that have featured your work. But now there's the first monograph of your work. The book, Nothing Like Something. Look, we'll get on to what's happening with the project in a moment, but I, I am intrigued. Firstly, I know it's a poem, but the story will be so much better coming from you. Um, why the title? Nothing like something. I think I love the poet Philip Larkin, and he's he's a bit like a street photographer. The way his poems are all about life that he sees around him, yeah. and yeah. Um, and he's talking about his poems are all about uh, sometimes about you know places and people, and he's witnessing he's witnessing things like the, yeah. there's a poem Wits and Weddings, um, I think that's the title. Where he's just on a train and watching um, in, the, in the old days when people went on the honeymoon, they used to catch a train <laughs> to, to Bognor Regis or somewhere. <laughs> but he's just witnessing the countryside and the people, all the weddings as he goes down and the train stops at stations and, and, and on a Saturday afternoon, the people, are newly married couples are getting on the train and so on and so forth. And his, 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 his poems are like street photography, yeah. but written street photography. And um, I particularly like his his poems and this particular poem is about his his childhood where, where he's he's arriving at it again on a train and he comes to a town where he used to live as a kid and 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 he's just thinking how his childhood was 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 made all the things that a, one might think happened they didn't happen you know and uh, and it's maybe not what my quite the same to do with my photographs but it's i like the idea that that my photographs of really of things. There's nothing special happening. They're nothing dramatic. They're just very events that are that could be described as as very little happening in them. I've uh, referred to my pictures that I make on my photo walks sometimes, Nils, um, as my something and nothings. So when I when I saw your title of the book, I, I instantly thought, ah, it, it slots into play. Perhaps, by the way, Philip Larkin could be good homework for all street photographers to go and read. Absolutely, and. There's a, there's a lot of poems. There's the one one where he describes looking at a, a photograph album. Uh, I can't remember the title. The, the ladies' photo, photograph album, I think it's called something like that. But I wish I could remember. But it's he's just looking at all the, the photographs in the album and describing you know, different stages and so on. It, it's very. Yeah. And he was a photographer himself, as a matter of yeah. interest. And um, I think yes, uh, it's just a, a wonderful. His way, the way poems, his poems are just describing people, mm. looking at, he's watching people all the time, but just instead of photographing them, describing them he's in describing his poems. Them. Um, the book, 
it launched on Kickstarter. Unfortunately, it didn't make the the full total that you were hoping for. Uh, mm. However, I believe, well, I think you suggested at least in our in our communications that uh, there might be a plan B. <laughs> There's always a plan B. <laughs> <laughs> What's your plan B? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I I think no. There's it's just a question of of trying to see what other alternatives there are and. Yeah. I think we'll just have to wait and see what what comes up next best. And uh, but it'd be nice to, yeah, I definitely want to to try and get something published. And I mean, uh, yeah, I mean it's a beautiful design. Um, it is, yeah, yeah. I I love this yeah, idea as well that you left Sutherland. Yeah, you you le- you left, or was it the design that left the the spaces on the front of the the book for? for yeah, so the, the book is is a beautiful design by Jim Sutherland. Jim Sutherland uh, Studio, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I was introduced to him by my good friend nick turpin and yeah. he he come up he's come up with this uh jim has come up with this beautiful design i guess it's it's quite an expensive design <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've i've raised quite a lot of money but it wasn't enough but you never know until you try it how these things will go so at least you've tried and you know if you didn't try people would say oh why don't you try kickstarter and yeah. in which case at least i can say i've tried that and we'll see what happens next well i'm hoping that some life comes into the book because i think the design of it, it being able to choose the pictures that you want because they come on the, as, front, cover, yes. on the front cover is a great idea I it think, is it is i it's think fantastic. jim said there was something like 300 permutations that you could you could <laughs> you could possibly have as a as a as a cover you could have a different cover every day you look at the book 100 yeah, images yeah. from um well i think it's 20 stroke 40 years there's some older ones in there as well um yeah. how on earth did you did you manage to to hone it down to just just a hundred yeah that's that's difficult and even now i i i think maybe i should have changed a few here and there. i thought but, you might <laughs> but um i don't think they just come down to my favorite pictures the ones which you 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 come back there are some new ones and there's some very old ones but um some of them stood the test of time and it's yeah it's difficult well i, I had the privilege of uh, of spending some time with the magnum photographer mark power as he was selecting work for uh, something he was producing and he was pouring laboring over the images which ones would go with which and what Mm. page would follow i know know you know where i'm going with this what page would (laughs) what page would follow what and i absolutely adored this concept that you have of quite literally throwing the pictures all up into the air and seeing which ones landed next to which it was a japanese photographer's original yeah. concept wasn't it yes it was i saw a documentary and for the life of me i can't find it anywhere on youtube <laughs> i distinctly remember seeing it i'll try and i'll try and find it for you <laughs> yeah daidi moriyama yeah and he's he was saying how you know he just chucked all his pictures up yeah, in the air, yeah. as you say and i didn't literally chuck them up in the air on this occasion i just sat i printed them all out in little uh, six by sevens and shuffled them yeah. and i sat with, with my partner Liza and had several cocktails and we just sat all evening shuffling and shuffling and shuffling <laughs> And then at some point we arrived at this at the point we said, okay, this is it. This is the final shuffle. Yeah. And that's and but it, it it is quite extraordinary how fascinating it's fascinating how the pictures all seem to relate to each other. Mm. Well, Jim <laughs> said that, didn't he? Yes, he was he was right. he was amazed how yeah. the, the pictures in this random nature all, all kind yeah. of talked to and with each other, didn't they? Yeah, and and and, and I think that's that's the answer because and for for any book i'd ever do i think (laughs) if you start thinking too hard about what might follow on from the other i think maybe it it becomes a bit boring that way it was you you see a picture which obviously connects with the other picture and um you think yeah okay but but it's more interesting to find a picture which kind of doesn't connect (laughs) but but you find connections with you know yeah uh, yeah which i I think jim jim did i'm intrigued Uh, this might be a difficult question to answer but i'll try uh i'm intrigued as to what you've learned nils maybe not as a photographer although i'm sure it will be closely allied to your answer but as a human uh, what has photographing people taught you about people? In a way, you, you, I could come back to to, the, to Philip Larkin Poems because he right. he observes people and and he reveals elements of people's lives and the way people live to me in a in a way which I can relate to. 
And it's more a question of, I think maybe, hopefully, my what my pictures reveal about elements of humanity or, or, or in the nature of, of um, see things that, that you kind of can relate to. Nick Turpin, who's a, a friend of this show as well, said that mm. all street photographs ride this knife edge of, of being nothing <laughs> or something. <laughs> Are, are you particularly hard on yourself when you return from a day of making pictures on the street and what, and what you decide to keep and not keep? Is is there a huge library? If I, if I were to look onto your hard drive, would there be a library of things that you just can't bring yourself to delete because you think there might be something in it? There, there's thousands and thousands and thousands I mean, <laughs> of photographs <laughs> which which uh, never make – well, no, never – show anybody it's yeah. because they're not any good and one of the things that the whole uh burgeoning interest in street photography has brought about is the there's there's a lot of it there's a lot of images around and yeah. it's just important not to bore people <laughs> with too much uh, too many pictures and show something which you think is is worth showing yeah. and again it comes back to uh, you know philip luck and he wrote very few poems in that respect, he's he's uh, an inspiration from that point of view. He, he uh, I think, he was very hard on himself for what he finally thought was was worth showing. It's been, it's been very interesting uh, having a conversation with you about about inspirations. It feels feels to me a bit, Nils, like um, perhaps Philip Larkin, though I mean, he did carry a camera, as you as you told us, but mm. um, maybe he's been as as much a an inspiration as someone like a Henri Cartier-Bresson or somebody like that. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. The way other people work, and that could be the same for uh, music as well and so on. You, you, you're always asking yourself what, what will last, what will be worth listening to a music or reading poetry and so on, you know, 100, 200 years from now. And, and what, what element makes it, what, you know, what, what will survive, you know. Do you ask yourself and, those questions? Do you? Do yeah, you, yeah, so you, you, what, you have to. What, what, is, what is your legacy then? Well, one hopes one has, a, one leaves something behind that, that will still be um, worth looking at in years to come. Do you think there's a do you think there's a particular picture of yours that that says Nils Jorgensen? Um, possibly. I like the uh, black and white picture I took again 40 years ago of a <laughs> of a one man band at the urinal. Uh, I, the, yes, the, I know. He's, it. He's, he's, and I, I particularly like that <laughs> because it was one of the early on pictures I took very early on, and it it has all the elements that I like. It's it's. It's um, taken with a very small camera, a little Olympus XA, a little small pocket camera, in an unlikely place, you know, you know gents, you rhyme. Um, oh, it's very simple, it's very, it's funny, and it's graphic. It's, it's, it's just the shapes themselves, so, yeah. you know. And He's carrying the, the drum on his back, isn't he? He's got a yeah. drum on the back yeah. of his back, and, yeah. he, and, and he's at the urinal, and the shapes of urinals become beautiful, and it's yes. a whole... Yeah. It's, it's making... It's, it's nothing <laughs> <laughs> happening, but it's something. It's, 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 if you break it down into its elements, or we tell somebody what it is, it's... Yeah. It doesn't sound like a, it would be worth something, but I, I, I like that. And my thanks today to, to Nils Jorgensen for being, uh, being my guest. And for links to Nils and other photographers that you've uh, heard about or from today, the Instagrams, the Veros, and the websites that we've mentioned, go to today's show page, episode number 356 on photowalk.show or follow the link in the podcast player app that will also take you there. Sunday's Extra Mile features um, just a little bit more of Nils, actually. Just a smidge, as Philip Larkin would never have said. Um, our playout song today is from Bayo, the song that uh, hopefully will take you into just a few more moments of your photo walk today whilst you... Uh, you think about what you've heard today from our amazing contributors, both by letter and uh, and by the sound of their voice as well. And um, the song is, um, well, you may recognise her just wonderful voice uh, because she's, um, she's certainly one of my favourites on this show because honestly, 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 you can, um, you fall, well, I do, um, fall deeply into into her voice because she's haunting, she's 
poetic, which is very apt today. And you go from the uh, the shadows into to the light with a song that I've chosen for sure. Neil, heavens, you sound smitten, man. Well, I am. Um, I needed a very special song, perhaps a, a familiar one, to uh, to close after my conversation with perhaps one of the most, um, I think, one of the most uh, gentle photographers I've had the absolute pleasure to talk with. And I suppose um, the song's just a tad melancholic as well, which sort of goes with a Philip Larkin sub-theme that we've had today. The line, maybe one more trip around the sun, is just, ah, oh, honestly, it's just, it's utterly beautiful. Maybe one more trip around the sun. So, uh, yeah, I need a special postscript as well, and it, it has to be from the, the poet and photographer, as we found out, Philip Larkin. Um, we'll sort of uh, close where we kind of started by mentioning him. Uh, and I like this, and like any good poem or, or quote in this case, uh, make of it as you will. I, re- I read into this my interpretation of photography maturing with our, our experience in life. Uh, but then if you talk to my English teacher, Mr Norris, he'll just tell you how much I stared out the window when it came to deciphering anything like, uh, like Shakespeare or or uh, Chaucer, or in this case, Larkin. Um, so, so what do I know? But anyway, this is the PS that I've chosen today uh, from one Philip Larkin. They say eyes clear with age. It's all in our hands, this life of time That's given to us all It gathers round each night, each morn We watch it pass and grow It is all in our hands, it is all in our hands With every field and rising sea sounds of all and with every change we'll always be where hope's not lost but found it is all in our hands it is all in our Life of Time from Bayo. And that's it for this week. My thanks to Niels Jorgensen, Bill Ward once more, and Simon Buckley, mpb.com, and our extra milers on Sunday for you. Yes, a little more from Niels. 
And I think, yes, I do want to investigate poetry and why I'm pleased to have Larkin reintroduced to me. Uh, next Friday, we're in Europe. Well, I won't be physically, but let me take you figuratively the, the way I can in podcast sphere to Europe to spend time with the landscape photographer Andy Mumford. And I think I have a fabulous idea for those of us who make small studies of things with our cameras. This idea really captivated my imagination earlier this week when I recorded a conversation with a photographer who hand makes small photographic pamphlets then then leaves them in places sometimes libraries even for people to find it is a magical idea and the conversation sort of well it organically develops as we go along and I think you probably will gather my enthusiasm uh, grows too as the conversation happens. I wonder what Philip Larkin might have said had he found one of these pamphlets in between the literature in his library. I will introduce you to a special, a very special photographer in next week's show. Music today is from the wonderful artslist.io. Final fist bumps go to Neil Ford, head of stuff. I just don't understand, although last weekend Neil turned up and sorted a load of stuff I don't understand. Emily Renier for your eyes in our Facebook group and Andrea Gilpin, chief of staff on the Instagram Vero and Ideas floor. I look forward to photographing with you, hearing from you and talking with you next time. Oh, I don't know. I'm like second best I am. Oh, car. Ah, it's been months since we've heard from you. Yeah, since that small furball's arrived, you just talked to him. I think you need to remember who takes you on these wonderful walks. Oh, Carr, are you feeling a bit unloved? In a word, yes. Well, Carr, just for those who thought I'd come to my senses and didn't talk to my jalopy anymore, I tell you what, a fan letter flooded into you this week. Really? For me? Yeah, for you. From Graham Tucker. No relation, I think, to our friend Sean. Other Tuckers are available, as I said earlier. Well, go on then. Read it. I will. Hi, Neil. I just wonder, have you sold Carr? Only I haven't heard from him for weeks. Not that I don't appreciate Sabark a lot, but I thought I'd just check in. Since uh, our family, we have uh, a car we talked to as well, called Wilma, the seven-year-old Golf, who's still going strong with 87,000 miles to her name. A few more dents, though. <laughs> The, the what she started with. But like us all, it's the dents in our bodywork that define us. That is not an excuse for denting me. No, I don't think Graham is suggesting that. He's not finished yet anyway. Please, please tell us that you've not sold car, or worse still, sold out to that car company whose boss seems to be ripping apart my favorite app for sharing pictures and stories. Although, if you really want to get a Christmas e-card from she who you mention from time to time, i.e. Greta, it's worth knowing that Kia have some excellent EVs these days. I know that because we've been looking, but don't tell Wilma. Hmm, I had noticed, actually, Graham. Right, that's it. Oh, car. <laughs> I'm pulling your handbrake. Come on, let me in. Let's go home. Come on, car. <laughs> car, open this, it's cold. Car. Oi! The Photo Walk is a Loading Zone production. Come on, let me in.